Hello grade 9 students! Welcome to quarter 1, week 2. And for today's lesson, we will talk about the transport of nutrients in the respiratory and circulatory system. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain how the respiratory and circulatory system work together to transport nutrients, gases, and other molecules to and from the different parts of the body. Listen carefully and jot down important details to this lesson. Last week, we are done discussing the first part of the lesson. Let us have a short review about the concept of respiratory system. Do you still remember the function of respiratory system? Mm, correct! In order to stay alive, the body has to breathe air. Basically, we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. This process is known as respiration. Respiratory system is a series of organs responsible for taking in oxygen and expelling out carbon dioxide. The reason why we breathe is because of the respiratory system. Now, let's recall the parts of the respiratory system. For the upper part of the respiratory system, we have the nose and mouth as the entrance of oxygen in our body. This air will pass through nasal cavity or nasal passageways, making the air warm, damp, and clean of unknown particles. Pharynx or throat and larynx or also known as the voice box are accessory organs that serves as the passageway of air down to the trachea and lungs. Trachea is also known as the windpipe. It serves as the main passageway of air into the lungs. Next is the lungs. It is the main organ of the respiratory system. Bronchi are the two branching tubes that connect trachea to the lungs. And bronchioles are the hair-like tubes that connect to the alveoli where the gas exchange happens. Any idea what happens when we breathe in and breathe out? The first picture shows the process of inhalation, while the second one shows the process of exhalation. Can you spot the difference between the two? During inhalation, the oxygen enters our body, while during exhalation, the carbon dioxide exits our body. Next is when we inhale. The rib cage move out and lungs expand, or the chest space increases. When we exhale, rib cage contracts and our lungs compress, while chest space decreases. Do you see the dome-shaped muscle below the lungs? Yes, it's called diaphragm, and it plays an important role in the process of respiration. When you breathe in or inhale, the diaphragm muscles contracts or it moves down. When we exhale, the diaphragm muscle relaxes or moves up. So, that is what happens when we breathe. Here are the summary of the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the respiratory system. And now, we can proceed with the second part of this milk, which is the circulatory system. So at the end of the lesson, 
you should identify the different organs of the circulatory system. Describe the function of circulatory system and explain how blood flows in systemic circuit and pulmonary circuit. We can now proceed with the second organ system, that is circulatory system. What can you observe about this picture? Correct! The circulatory system is life support structure that nourishes your cells with nutrients from the food you eat and oxygen from the air you breathe. It can be compared to a complex arrangement of highways, venues, and lanes connecting all the cells together into a neighborhood. Sequentially, the community of cells sustains the body to stay alive. Circulatory systems, also known as the cardiovascular system. It is a life support structure that nourishes your cells with the food and oxygen. The circulatory system functions with other systems to deliver materials in the body. It circulates vital elements such as oxygen and nutrients at the same time. It also transports waste away from the body and prevent infection. There are three major parts of the circulatory system. First is the heart. It is the main organ of the circulatory system. It pumps the blood throughout the body. Second is the blood vessel. It carries the blood throughout the body. And we have three types of blood vessels. First, arteries. These carries oxygenated blood away from the heart to the cell tissues and organs of the body while veins carry the oxygenated blood towards the heart the third type of blood vessel is capillary these capillaries are the smallest blood vessel in our body connecting the smallest arteries to the smallest veins this is the actual site where the gases and nutrients are exchanged. Next is the blood. It carries the materials throughout the body. Blood composed of 55% plasma, strawed color, non-living part of the blood, and 45% of form elements including the red blood cells or erythrocyte, white blood cells or leukocytes, and platelets or also known as thrombocytes. Now that you already know the respiratory and circulatory system, let us have some trivia. Do you know how big your heart is? A heart is a hollow muscle which is as big as your fist. Now, let us take a quick look on the parts of the heart. Our heart has four chambers, the two atria and the two ventricles. The two atria, the left and the right, are the receiving chambers of the heart. They accept the blood from the body, from the lungs.
Well, the two ventricles, the right and the left ventricles, are the pumping chambers or delivering chambers of the heart. They move the blood to the lungs and into the body. There is a valve between atrium and ventricle to prevent the blood from flowing backwards. The valves are like one-way doors that keeps the blood from moving in only one direction. The the valve that controls the opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Middle valve that controls the blood between the left atrium and left ventricle. Pulmonary valve controls the flow of the blood from the right ventricle. It prevents the blood flow back to the right ventricle as it relaxes. And last, we have aortic valve that controls blood flow between the left atrium and the aorta. Now, let us have a quick review about the parts of the heart and circulation of blood within the heart. The oxygenated blood enters through superior and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava receives blood from the upper parts of the body, while inferior vena cava carries the blood from the lower parts of the body. The oxygenated blood will be received by the right atrium, passed through tricuspid valve and pumped by right ventricle and pass through pulmonary valve and will exit through pulmonary artery going to the lungs to get oxygen. It will now become oxygenated blood and will enter the pulmonary vein. It will be received by left atrium, pass through by cuspid valve and pat by left ventricle and pass through aortic valve and will exit to the largest artery, which is aorta, going to the rest of the body to deliver the oxygen and nutrients. That is how our heart works. Now, let us have a key concepts on how the circulatory and respiratory system work together. First, enter your lungs and then into the left part of the heart. It is then driven by your heart into the bloodstream all the way through your body. The heart pumps blood, which transports essential nutrients, oxygen, and other chemicals to every cell in our body. Once it reaches cell, Oxygen processes and the nutrients releases energy. Carbon dioxide is given off during the process. The blood delivers carbon dioxide into the right portion of the heart, from which it is pumped to the lungs. Carbon dioxide leaves your body through the lungs when you exhale. The circulatory system functions the other body systems to deliver materials in the body. It circulates vital elements such as oxygens and nutrients. At the same time, it also transports waste away from the body. Now, let us explore the types of circulation. First is the pulmonary circulation. It is the movement of the blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Second, coronary circulation. It is the movement of the blood through the tissues of the heart. And the last type of circulation is the systemic circulation. It is the movement of the blood from the heart to the rest of the body, including the lungs. Now that you already know how the respiratory and circulatory system works together, let's proceed to your learning task for this week. For your learning task this week, we have learning task number four, 
refer to your module. You were to read the handout about the heart and blood circulation and prepare to answer the guide questions. You can use these illustrations for your reference. And after reading the handout, answer the following questions. For learning task 5, you are tasked to examine the diagram showing the pulmonary and systemic circulation. You're going to write the number that corresponds to the correct order by tracing the blood flow in correct order. Some numbers are indicated already. Since it's week 2, you're going to answer your performance task 1 entitled the face mask design in this activity you will learn to make a face mask from used clothing available in your home look for the three different textures of textile and find out which is the best textile for face mask and what design is the best to protect the user for your materials you need three different textures of used clothing that is available in your house. Make your own patterns for the desired design of your face mask and after that, fill in the template in the screen. Don't forget to fill in the table after making your face mask. In the first column, you're going to write what type of textile did you used for the second column you are going to describe how you inhale and exhale using the face mask you can test it by pumping as fast as you can within three minutes for the third column you are going to describe the comfort of wearing the face mask like seat absorbing capacity heat absorbing capacity and moist release when wearing eyeglasses and don't forget to answer the guide question after filling in the table so that's all for this week thank you for staying with me and see you to our next class goodbye